up everybody? So we're back out in the shop for day four of the daily vlog series. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take the knife that we did the design for and cut it out, get it shaped up, get it uh, the bevels done, get the heat treat on it and the temper. Go ahead get that stuff done and I'm gonna go a little more in depth than I normally go whenever I'm doing this so we're gonna do that and then what I might go ahead and do is on the next video we'll go ahead and make up the handle scales for it and I'll go into more depth about how I'm gonna do the handle scales and things like that but that way we have a little bit more involved build series with this and then we'll go from there so over the next few days we'll go ahead get this done now remember on Friday we're gonna go ahead and do the bevel jig release so that'll be showing y'all how I made my bevel jig the easiest way possible and uh, that's what we're gonna do but let's jump into this see how it goes I figured I would go ahead and skip to this part right here so I can explain why I bevel these holes but one it cleans them up two it creates a pocket for that epoxy to sit in so that you get a better bond when you put your handle scales on Now, when it comes to cutting out my blades, I tend to get 95% of it done on my bandsaw because these bandsaw blades, I can do plenty of knives with one blade and it cuts through these still like a hot knife through butter. So you might as well use it, get rid of most of the excess so that you're not wasting your abrasives. And by braces, I mean the belts on my 2x72 belt grinder. But we go ahead, we get a lot of this stuff knocked out on here. And I'll go through and like inside this finger choil, I'll get everything back to where I just have a little bit of the line that I drew left. And then we'll do the rest of it on the belt grinder. got most of that shape done and we'll go on the belt grinder this is a 40 grit ceramic belt we'll take this and we'll refine that whole entire outside of the blade get things rounded off and real smooth go ahead and go all the way back to the line so whenever I do the outline of these I go ahead and use a marker I cut on the line with the bandsaw and I'll grind a line all the way off of the blade and get it back to the actual size of that template. And that's what I'm doing right here. Just refining everything and getting back to that line. going to do here we just take a 400 grit belt and we go around the whole entire knife and just get all of the if you want to call it scratch lines or grind lines going one direction but you want to make sure on this part that you do just a really good job of getting it nice and even and smooth because on the next step we need to put that center line on there to do the bevels so we want this smooth so it puts a nice crisp line and of course right here, whenever I'm doing my plunge line jig, I just take it all the way up to the line that I drew for where I want the plunge line. And then we just tighten it down, get it all ready. And then we're gonna go ahead, mark the edge of the knife, and then take these calipers, measure the thickness, divide that by two, and then use that to get our center line. And we'll just go down both sides, just like that. And because we did a really good sand on that edge, it puts a nice crisp line all the way down it that you can see real easily. We're just gonna take a marker and go ahead and mark the whole entire side. Even though you can easily see where everything is from the forge scale. I don't want to rely on that. I want to make sure that 
I've got it completely blacked out and so that okay so see right now you can barely see the line that I just scribed on there if it would have been just the forge scale it wouldn't have stood out that much so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this scriber and I'm gonna go ahead and make that line bolder just like that it makes it a lot easier for me whenever I start grinding the bevels and I like using the marker just because it makes everything stand out a little more the contrast of the shiny steel stands out way more and it makes it to where my bevels just I get crisp lines on them and I'm real picky about that and what I'm doing here I'm just going at a really aggressive angle you can see right there I grind all the way to that center line and then I take the time to feather it back from there but I grind all the way to the center line steep bevel and then we just feather it back we just work it back and all I'm doing is just putting pressure uh, towards the spine of the knife so that it will just like I said feather that bevel as far back as I want and I don't end up going too far so you get this right here I love a good nice smooth bevel right here we are taking and I, I jumped straight from a 40 grit to a 400 grit. That's what we're doing right here. This is a 400 grit belt. Um, I'm not going to be taking all the scratches out. If I was going to take all the scratches out, I would do a gradual upgrade all the way up 400 grit. But for this, I want to leave a little bit of that texture. Now we're going to go ahead, do Scotch Bright belt, and really just smooth out the bevels as much as possible. If you had any wave or anything like that in your grind lines, this scratch right belt will take a, pretty much all of that out. It just leaves a nice smooth finish. And this is my first time trying this out. This is some mortar, silicone, whatever you want to call it, to do a Hamon line. And I wanted to try that out. I'll talk about that more later in the video but we do go ahead plunge it into this is peanut oil I'm a big fan of using peanut oil this is heated to 120 degrees and that's what I prefer to quench it we do go ahead temper the knife I'm doing cycles of 225 degrees two one hour cycles and then we're gonna go ahead and acid etch it some people will sand the blades before the acid etch but for some of the finishes that I want I acid etch just like this it's just a personal preference for some acid etches uh, I would prefer to sand it to 500 grit or 1000 grit and then acid etch it and what I wanted to go ahead and do because I saw a little bit of the Hamon line I wanted to give it a little buff and see if it could bring it out I'm just using a gray compound on this and uh, I wanted to give it a little buff to see if it would actually stand out. And it did stand out, so I was real happy about that. And again, I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in the closing of this video. All right, guys. Well, this wraps up today's vlog. And I'm going to take a second so I can talk to you all about something. So check the finish out on this. Awesome hammered finish up here. But what I want to show y'all is you can't really see it a ton, but the transition from here to here, there's a line. That's that Hamon line. You really see it transition from here to here. I am really proud of that because whenever I put this on there, fireplace mortar in a little tube, whenever I put it on there, I was letting it dry and I stopped and did a little bit of research and from all the forums they were like, you know what, don't do it. You're going to have to thermal cycle and do all this stuff to be able to get a Hamon line. And so I thought, I'm not going to do all of that on this. I'm going to do a regular heat treat on it. I'm just going to wipe it off. So after it had dried a little bit, I went ahead and just wiped all the, the, 
that mortar off of this there was a little bit of residue left on there and I thought a little burn off in the forge it'll be fine that little bit of residue <laughs> created just enough barrier and just enough transition to give me a hamon line so really happy about that <laughs> I was able to get a hamon line on this knife um, it's not a super pronounced one but it is just enough for me to go yeah that's awesome um, I love the finish on this knife I love that that hammered finish up there you really see it right there boom boom but uh, love the way that turned out I am going to EDC this this is gonna be my personal knife because this is my first knife that I've ever made out of 5160 and I need to make sure that my heat treat process was right that my temper process was right uh, I need to make sure that this is a knife that's gonna last so whenever I'm making these I know that I can trust my blade is gonna be amazing in someone else's hand so I'll be using this knife for the next few months I'm gonna open everything with it I'm gonna chop with it I'm gonna do all those things and I'm gonna make myself understand how this still works so that's what I'll be doing for a little bit but what we're gonna do on the next vlog we're gonna go ahead and make the handle scales for this knife we're gonna do a multi-layer uh, multi-piece handle scale because hey why not I want to show y'all how I do those and my thought process behind them so that'll be next video and then the video after that will be putting those handle scales on this knife and finishing it up so guys make sure that you go ahead subscribe right there Turn on the notification bell so you get notified of whenever the next video for this comes out. And guys, if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or one of my videos that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for checking that out. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time.